Alternative Radio. Hello. All right. Hi. Hello. Hello. How's it going, sir? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Good. Okay. So, not going to lie. I've only listened to a couple episodes of the uh, Wait You Haven't Seen podcast. I had no idea you had a Highlander podcast. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Uh, the, so the Highlander one was called, um, is called still, we're, we're actually still doing some of it. Um, it's called just let's watch Highlander. And, um, Easy enough. just my buddy, <laughs> my buddy, Audie and I decided to, to start that up. And so we went through the series, um, episode by episode where what we would do is we would do a season. We would kind of wrap up, give our thoughts on the season, and then we would re- review one of the movies and move on. So we went through all the seasons of the show. We're actually right now in the middle of the spinoff show. The the because, Raven? Yeah. No, babe, Renegade. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> was it Tracker? Whatever. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we did. So we did all of Highlander, the series. We did all of the movies. We did the anime movie. Um, oh. I've oh. talked about the animated series, which is. We, we, we mm-hmm. watched one episode of that and we're like, oh, oh we're good. Yeah, no, it's I I have never watched. I think I've watched two episodes of it in total. Um, I mean, I love Highlander and and the lore and the the whole concept, but I have my limits. Yeah, Um, (laughs) even us, we have limits. (laughs) I will say, though, the the anime that came out in 2007, The Search for Vengeance, um, it's actually pretty good. Sorry, I'm talking about your um, vengeance. That's just what I think. (laughs) <laughs> it's the same. Uh, it's the the guy that directed it created uh, Ninja Scroll. If you've watched any anime, um, you may have seen clips from that or something, or have watched that. But it's got a. It, it it's loosely. It's yeah. pretty cool. It it was it was surprising. It was way better than I thought it would be. Is it like on the Tubi or something? I was actually just trying to look I it up here and see. Don't remember. It was Highlander Search for Vengeance. Yeah. I know I watched it on, um, I had a DVD copy of it uh, that I was actually sent. Um, 2007. No, it's not. It's not anywhere right now. Mm, Of course. Something to ask the Black Bank about. Oh, actually. Oh, it might be on YouTube here. I think there is a, there is a copy of it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks like they have the original anime one and one dubbed mm-hmm. that's like 15 minutes shorter. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> and my apologies, Travis. I don't normally cough all the way through a podcast. <laughs> I'm on uh I'm I'm on the tail end of pneumonia. Ooh. Um yeah, I did do 25 days of antibiotics. Ooh, uh, so this is actually my first time drinking in a month and a half. Yeah. Wow. So I'm excited. Well, that's <laughs> good progress then. You're getting better. Yeah. Uh, Travis, uh, do you want me just to record on Zoom or do you want to like record your stuff on your end and we'll record on our end? Like how, uh, how however, how you... whatever works easiest for you. I can record my end um, um, if you want me to. That's not I'll a problem. I'll probably keep recording on Zoom, but if you want to record on your end, um, yeah. that may just make it easier to like hit out coughs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Let me just uh, uh, get. Yes, somebody won't stop coughing. Yes, yeah, Sushi. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh, yes. And we have our, our little dog. By little dog, I mean 55 pounds. But he's still puppy. So sometimes he makes Oh, I know how that is. My uh, my 70 pound puppy is behind me. Oh, what um, kind of puppy is it? She is uh, pit bull mixed with I don't know what else. Um, they didn't really know at the rescue when I got her. I got her at like a year and a half old. She's definitely pit bull, though. There's pit Aww. in her for sure. She's a big dope. She's got a tongue too big for her head, so it's always sticking out a little bit. <laughs> oh my god, I love it! Yeah, sushi oh is sushi came with a DNA test. He is a mostly Australian cattle dog with okay. Tring Walker Coon Hound, Husky, oh boy. Pit Bull, and Bulldog, and then a bunch of Super Mutt. <laughs> oh my. So he has all the asshole breeds. <laughs> Super yeah, Mutt, which I assume is just doggy gangbang, but <laughs> he's, pretty much. We, he's our white trash special. He's all the white trash breeds. I mean, hound and uh, husky. So it, is is he a talkative one? Because like huskies, I know are I mean, talkative. He can be, but usually he, he's just kind of like, oh, oh. oh well, like that that's good. Then. Not, she's not yeah, too he, loud. Yeah, he's 
he's actually like very quiet most of the time but when he like when he does bark in that he definitely mm-hmm. does the woo, 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 and it's oh. very loud <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. bella's not a loud one but she uh when she wants to be when she wants to bark and show off her big girl bark it can be a little intimidating the big dog bark no uh, she doesn't bark at most at much but for whatever reason she doesn't like kids i haven't figured it out like yeah, we'll be walk- trustworthy <laughs> yeah, i mean we're walking through the neighborhood and she will bark at the kids as they walk you know home from school or something you know bus drops them off and they're walking back to their house and that's all that's the only time she really barks she's weird she snores though a lot oh. yeah sushi used to like kids but then we were at a dog event um and this little girl who was like six was petting him and then for some reason she made a fist and shoved her whole fist down his throat no oh, jeez yeah and he decided he did not trust kids no more i mean i can't blame him yeah. i would right? not trust anyone uh, of the size and shape that you know tried to shove a fist down my throat yeah exactly right? like if I, if I ran into a podcaster or something and they did the same thing i'd be like hold on a sec Wait a minute, right? I'm going to rethink this thing. Maybe maybe I got to rethink my format here. <laughs> yeah. Centuries, immortals have moved silently among us, knowing that in the end there could be only one. But now, in this world, in this time, I don't care about the game. I don't care about the rules. A supernatural enemy has grown too strong for any immortal to face alone. He surrounded himself by immortals loyal only to him. There has never been a more powerful immortal. They are the worst. What has always been a fight for one, neither one of us can beat him alone, has now become a battle two must face. You and Connor are like brothers. Together. One of us has to die now, and you know it. Highlander Endgame. Yeah. yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Steve. And I'm Izzy. And this is Everything, Everything I Learned from Movies. And tonight! Oh, tonight. Oh, we are continuing There Can Only Be One Month. There Can Only Be One. With 2000's Highlander Endgame. I'm sorry, what now? Highlander Endgame? What? Hi- Hi- Highlander colon Endgame? I, I don't want an endgame in my colon, Steve. <laughs> okay, well, well, luckily, babe, we have a goddamn expert with us. Oh, yes! We have TV's Travis from the Wait You Haven't Seen podcast. Welcome! Hey, how's it going? Oh, pretty dang good. Uh, <laughs> so, you have a Highlander podcast. You're, you're an do. expert. Um, I do. I, I'll go with expert, sure. I've done. I've <laughs> talked about Highlander enough, I think, that I can call myself an expert. Um, I have a show called Let's Watch Highlander. My friend Audie Norman and I decided one day, hey, we like talking about this stuff. Let's just do a show on it. And we have, uh, over the past couple of years, gone through every single episode of Highlander the series, all five movies, plus the animated movie, and we are currently in the middle of the spinoff series Highlander the Raven. Um, so yeah, when it comes to Highlander stuff, I'm kind of obsessed and a little, uh, it, it, I have a problem is what I have. (laughs) There you go. I I just, uh, subscribing and all that here, 134 episodes. I got some, uh, backlogging to start listening on. (laughs) Yeah. And for the first, for the first bit, I would end every episode with there can be only one, 
119 episodes and I would count it down. (laughs) That can only be uh, 12 episodes now. We're down to (laughs) Uh, season six. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's best not to talk about season six. Yeah. So, all right, we we uh, we had a scheduling conflict having you on with our little uh, little roundtable thing. Um, yes. So, the Highlander series. What 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 are your your overall thoughts on the series? Just just like a like a quick summation. Like, would you recommend? Where are some tropes that worked for you? Some that that didn't? Maybe. Sure, sure. Um, I overall, I think it's a solid series, especially given that it's a kind of early to mid '90s syndicated series. Um. I think that when it's good, it's real good. It has, eh, look, there are some weak points. There's some bad episodes. Season six is not very good at all because they didn't really know what they were doing. They they just were like, well, we're going to see what we can make a spinoff out of. And boy, that didn't work so well. Um, but it expanded the lore of Highlander from that first movie. And I love that. I love the introduction of the Watchers. I love the introduction of the character of Mythos and the 5,000-year-old man and sort of the way that it explored immortality a lot more because they just had more time, could tell more stories. So that kind of stuff I really, really liked. Um, There's some early episodes that are a bit rough because they just didn't have a budget, didn't quite know what they were doing. Uh, But those middle seasons, three, four, and five, they really hit a stride, and it's good. And it was surprisingly well-written. Like the characters and the relationships between certain characters were... Much better than I would have rem- than I remembered it being when I first watched it, going through and kind of rewatching it again with a with a closer eye. Like it's still tropey and you know it's it's fantasy TV. We always would uh, like to pepper things with like, look, we're talking about a show with immortal beings fighting to cut each other's heads off. So like, grain of salt, all of what we're going to talk about. Um, <laughs> but no, overall, I definitely recommend it if you're into fantasy series at all. Um, I think it's worth it. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent summation. Yeah. Do you have like a, like a favorite episode or. I do. There's a two part episode in, um, in season five, uh, that centers around the character of mythos called, uh, the first episode is called comes a horseman. And the second one is revelation six, eight. And in it, they dive into, uh, mythos being a, a member of the four horsemen back in the bronze age. Um, and it was just, it had some really good storytelling going on in it. I really, really liked that. Um, a lot of conflict between Duncan and Mythos and just the idea of like what it's like to be alive for that long and how you can change over time and, and all that kind of stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, think I brought that up as one of my favorites on a little roundtable thing. Okay. How about you? any least favorite episodes or I don't know, type of episodes? Well, uh, as I said, season six is rough because the first half of it, Duncan's barely in it, and they were literally trying everything to see what would make the spinoff. So they would have a different character each episode, that, and those were rough. Um, but taking that out, there is an episode in season one, and I both dislike it a whole lot, but I also kind of love it just for the, the terribleness of it. It's got Joe Pagliano in it whom I love. Yeah. But I have no idea what he's doing in the episode. He plays a doctor. The doctor, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, like his accent changes in every scene for whatever reason. And I get it. You know, they produced that show in this way where they would be writing an episode uh, and they would be filming an episode and they would be editing an episode all in the same week. And they would rotate that through when they would fit, when they would produce. So they would go for whatever it is, 20-something weeks with yes. that rotation in mind. So actors would get like hours to, to study a script probably before they shoot for a week and then maybe come in to do some ADR. So it's like, I get it. He didn't have a whole lot of time to do anything. He's a much better actor than what he gave there, but I don't, I don't know what decisions were being made there. There was also a weird thing where Duncan gets drugged and it spends half the episode just whacked out of his mind on whatever painkillers they get. I don't know. It was just weird. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a few uh, but that, that just like I I don't know the the ones that always got me were the ones where they're like trying to like 
turn it into a comedy but it was but it was like sitcom comedy like it was uh yeah i, I don't know it was kind of weird like do, you know and you can always tell by the music is like the do 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 <laughs> and like yeah and, and the, the neighbor would come over uh what was his name maurice or whatever and oh just yeah be like oh Come on, guys. <laughs> well, and it was such a weird production, too, because they would do they would shoot half the season in Vancouver and then have to go take pull stakes and take everything to Paris and shoot half the season there because that was part of their finance gig uh, was they were required to shoot half the uh, season in, in Paris. Okay, so, that's, why, that's why they did that because I was always yeah. like, oh, maybe Vancouver just started snowing, and so they're like, well, it's just cold in Paris if you want to do that. <laughs> no, basically half the money came from a French company, and so they required it to be – half of it be set there and filmed there. And so they would have to write a reason in every season to get Duncan to leave Seacouver because it was – that's where he <laughs> technically was, was a mishmash of Seattle and Vancouver, leave there and go to Paris – and then at the end of the season, end up back. Um, so that, you know, there's that. I did learn a really interesting thing. I got to interview um, Roger Ballon, who did the music for the series. Um, he's he's the credited for, you know, music by in every, every episode. Basically, any music you heard in the series that wasn't a licensed song, um, he did. Oh, wow. And one of one of the interesting things was he didn't reuse music because they didn't, um, he was telling us how they didn't want to have like musical uh, things they would go back to. So he had to he had to write music bespoke for every episode and record it, oh, wow. um, which had to have been in, just insane. I can't oh, yeah. imagine. And with that. it being like cut and edited and stuff, like it with, within a week or whatever, and he's probably just yeah. like watching it and like, okay, yeah, something like this. Okay, let's get the people together. Compose, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. <laughs> so I mean. Just, just the fact that they did that is crazy to me. Uh, but no, like those, those, um, those comedy episodes were a bit much. the The show was at its strength when it would dive into immortality and the immortals, or some sort of story basing in that world. If it veered too far away from that, yeah. uh, was when it could really fall apart. Yes. Excellent. Well, yeah, th- thank you for the thing. Uh, we bring this up because this is the movie that comes after the series, after six seasons, yep. the lore and everything. Uh, mm-hmm. What, about two years after after it, it had been off the air? And they yeah. came back together for one last time, bringing the whole crew together. And uh, Yes, I guess, one, one last time because they definitely didn't make a movie seven years later. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about that next week. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, babe, I don't know about you. I'm a little thirsty. I'm still sober. Oh, I'm a little sober, and I'm drinking again. Yay! So, we have from you into Brewing Company, Christmas Cheer, Munich-style lager with juniper berries. Nice. Ooh. And do not take you into Brewing's advice of forget the map pack that you went to. You can take both. You There's take room both. for both. A map takes surprisingly little space in your backpack. <laughs> or even on your phone. <laughs> right. So I'm going to pop my top. Oh, my top. And the pour. Ooh, this is a beautiful golden brown right. beer. Oh. Has a gorgeous khaki colored head. Pull that cat hair out of there. <laughs> the cat hair is the garnish of your, uh, your beer. Uh, yeah, so it's got a khaki-colored head that's lingering, mm-hmm. soft and foamy. Steve's gone in for the sip. Yeah, nice, smooth, malt forward. Yeah, the juniper berries give it a nice little, like, floral quality. But, yeah, just nice and light. You can... Definitely festive. I can give it that. Mm-hmm. Oh, would you like some more? Absolutely. And please. Yeah, the juniper just gives it, like, a... A little brightness to it. Yeah, and a nice, like, herbaliness. But it's not overpowering. How about you, Travis? You uh, drinking anything on your end? Uh, nothing for me tonight. Um, but uh, I will definitely be uh, enjoying a drink that I learned about recently called, uh, affectionately called a pepperoni, which is Ooh. make a Negroni, but replace the vermouth with Dr. Pepper. Oh, okay. Excellent. So, <laughs> it actually sounds delicious. Excellent. Well, yes, yeah, 2000's Highlander Endgame from director Douglas... Ernie Kosky. I think I think I'm Steve. Right. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, you might know him 
as second assistant director of Howling for the Freaks. Hey! Yeah. How about first assistant director of what is his favorite, Dr. Mordred? Oh, yeah! Uh, Transfers 3, Prehysteria, Prehysteria 2, some of the Puppet Master sequels, Tales from the Hood, Four Rooms, From Dusk Till Dawn, Crow City of Angels, Austin Powers, Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, Spy Kids, Faculty, Resident Evil Extinction, and then he became first first director for this. (laughs) Uh, Then some uh, kid safety shorts, uh, six episodes of Sleepy Hollow, two episodes of Arrow, one of The Flash, Four of Limitless, Four of Bull, Nine of Criminal Minds, Five of SWAT, Five of Picard, Seven of Blue Bloods, and Four of Star Trek Discovery. So, moves one, moving his way up. And, uh, of course, characters by Gregory Wyden. We've talked about him like five times. You guys know him. Uh, story by William Panzer, same thing. But specifically for this movie, story by Eric Berndt. Who's he? Babe, all bangers for this guy because we have Surviving the Game. You ever mm. seen that one? I don't think so. No. Uh, good luck trying to find it, I found out. Because yeah. I remember watching it as a kid, and it's like, oh, god damn it. Like, you find, it's, mm. um, it, it, it's one of those, uh, I believe it's iced tea being uh, being hunted kind it's, of movies. Yeah, it's iced, it's iced tea and I think Rutger Hauer. Yeah. It's basically a retelling of the, the most dangerous game. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, and then also mm. Virtuosity, which we've talked about oh, on the podcast. Oh, snap. Uh, Romeo Must Die, also on the podcast. Mm. This, uh, the Hitcher remake, the one with, uh, I think Sean Bean was the, the Hitcher. Oh, right. Yeah. And two episodes of Z Nation. Uh, but the other one, screenplay by Joel uh, Soisson, S O I S S O N. Who's he? Uh, he was the producer of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, The Prophecy, and then he wrote. Dracula 2000. Eh? Eh? <laughs> uh, this, uh, the Prophecy sequels, Mimic 2, Hollow Man 2, Hellraiser Hellworld, Piranha 3 Double D. But then he also directed Prophecy 4 and 5, Children of the Corn Genesis, uh, Cam 2 Cam. I guess it's like an internet <laughs> horror one. And My Best Worst Adventure. I haven't heard of that one. But... All right. But the cast, oh my goodness. Not a star in the sky, for they are all in this movie. We have the Christopher Lambert as Connor McLeod of the Clan McLeod. Yeah! Ooh, excuse me. Uh, we have Adrian Paul as Duncan McLeod. Uh, they were cousins on the show, right? No. Kin- kinsman. Um, kinsman, okay. I think the, yeah. the, one Duncan's of my favorite lines... Duncan's years younger. Yeah, one of my favorite lines in the series is from the pilot episode where Connor McLeod introduces himself as... Connor McLeod of the ca- same clan, different vintage. Ah. <laughs> Which gets really weird when Duncan sleeps with his cousin. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite episodes. Anyway. <laughs> but we also have Jim Burns as Joe Dawson. Mm-hmm. Who's he, Steve? Uh, <laughs> voice actor. We kind of talked about him during the roundtable thing. Uh, he ain't got no legs, though. and I. I yep. It took me until like early season five to. I, I thought he just had a limp, <laughs> but then like there were specific episodes where it was showing that like he didn't have legs, and I'm like, oh, holy shit! So okay, this this is a, a funny story though. Uh, real quick, it, the the DVD collections for the series used to have little blurbs uh, ahead of each episode for a while from the producers and stuff, and in one of them they're talking about Jim Burns and they're talking about how he lost his legs in Vietnam. And then they stop and they realize, oh, no, 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 no. He lost his legs in a car accident. Joe Dawson lost his legs in Vietnam. Like they were conflating his character with him, uh, ah. which I, I always thought was hilarious. Nice. Uh, but also starring in this movie, Donnie Yen as Jin K. Yeah. yeah. Donnie fucking Yen. Uh, Bryce Payne as Jacob Kell. Uh, here we go. Lisa Barbusha. As Kate or Faith, depending on what timeline we're on. Right. Uh, Pete, uh, from the series, we have Peter Wingfield as Mythos. <laughs> Former Rockefeller CEO Damon Dash as Carlos for a scene. <laughs> yep. When he popped up in the movie, I'm like, oh, get the fuck out. <laughs> Man, nothing says 2000 like Damon Dash popping up for, <laughs> for a cup of coffee. Right. 
And of course, Adam Copeland, a.k.a. WWE's Edge, as Lachlan, also for a cup of coffee. Yeah! <laughs> mm-hmm. I definitely thought he was going to be a bigger part of the movie. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe because I'd see Money Plane. <laughs> money Plane! Oh. <laughs> oh, and that Santa one. Where he's the developer. The Christmas one with the Edge. With the Miz? Oh, it's the Miz. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get my wrestlers confused. I'm like, wait, was there one with the Edge too that I didn't see? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is one with the Edge. <laughs> now all those wrestlers look alike. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, what was that one where Triple H was basically the pacifier? <laughs> I think they all the have that version or something. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or the was it the the Marine or Twelve Round series where they all like start off with Cena and then it's uh, I don't know. Let's see what the Miz is up to or uh, Roman. Actually, Reigns yeah, I think or... <laughs> both of those did that. Both those series yeah. did that. They started with John Cena and then they're like, well, uh, I, what's Ted DiBiase Jr. doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get me Seth Rollins, you know. <laughs> uh, so how'd you uh, how'd you watch this movie? Uh, so I own this movie actually. Um, do, do you own the five pack? <laughs> no, I own the first movie and I own this one. Um, oh. My relationship with the Highlander movies is interesting because, uh, like, the first Highlander, phenomenal. I love that movie. It's a great cult classic. Uh, Highlander 2 is like a coked out fever dream um, <laughs> where they pretty much just were like, okay, you're under contract to make another movie. And M- Russell Mulcahy, he was like, fine, I'm going to do my, what I want to do. Um, then they made, you know, they decided to do Highlander 3, the apology and uh, <laughs> just go back to the, back to the well. Um, this one was because of, I had such a connection with the series. This was a movie that uh, I really enjoyed. Um it's 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 not good it it's it's flawed uh, it was what? a generous way for me to put it um but it's but it's good uh because i enjoy it um and it's not highlander the source so yeah and you, you, know. you feel for the characters a little more because of the the six seasons of the show and stuff like that at least right yeah Yep, absolutely. Um, I mean, even, the first time even, we watched it, we hadn't watched the series yet. So we're uh, like, right. who the fuck are these guys? Like, we knew Adrian <laughs> Paul, but, but it was like, who, who's, who's this Joe guy? Like, Mythos. Like, yep. who, who, they're not really filling in. Or, you know, there's like a line of exposition, but that, that that's about all you get. <laughs> well, and like, the movie has to do that thing that all movies do, right? Especially sequels, is they've got to force in exposition to get the people mm-hmm. up to speed so they know what's going on. So you have to have a scene where they explain that immortals fight one-on-one and take their heads and all that. And so it's clunky, right? It, it, it does that, which is kind of annoying. But, yeah, watching the series and then watching this, you definitely feel for them a bit more. There's, a, there's at least some connection there, um, which is part of what I liked about this uh, movie when I first saw it and then, you know, on subsequent viewings. I can see all its flaws, and there's some stuff that I'm just like, what are they what were they thinking? But, you know, it's still, I have fun with it uh, because it yeah. it's, in the end, it's still a Highlander movie. Um, I'm kind of glad that I'm not on next week talking about the source because it would just be me <laughs> gnashing my teeth and screaming for two hours. <laughs> why? Um, why? <laughs> oh, that, that was a movie, it feels like, written and directed by somebody who doesn't <laughs> like Highlander. <laughs> I'm done with it. <laughs> I really want Even, all of the Highlander movies like with with Adrian Paul in them to begin with the season 1 intro <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the best I was born 400 years ago in the islands of Scotland I am immortal so I am not alone yes <laughs> is it me or does that opening for season 1 sound eerily similar to the voiceover from the first movie they made Sean Connery record at the yep. last minute in his Yes yep, absolutely. and I think that's why I liked it I honestly like it better than Joe's. I mean, Joe Joe's great. Like he sells it, but it but there's also like a underlying like, is Joe trying to get inside of Duncan? Like a little. It bit? does like, sound like that. They're <laughs> he's a, they're romantic. He's there's, a lover, a fighter. Yeah, a true yeah, soldier. Well, because if we did establish, uh, I was just gonna say there is a little hero worship there from Joe. You can tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Stephen, I did realize, did notice very early on that every episode, F, every uh, every other episode, we have to have Duncan fucking so we can prove he's straight. <laughs> Otherwise, how would we know? 
There was a bit of that, yeah. It, actually, one of one of my favorite parts of the series early on was the relationship of Duncan and Tessa, yeah, um, and how well that worked. And I, it they was were sad really they wrote good together. They were, and it was such an emotional center anchor point for Duncan. And unfortunately, she got pregnant and wanted to go, you know, have a family, and so they had to write her off the show. And at that point, yeah, they definitely spent some time where Duncan's just like, "Well, all right, you're." Uh, you're a woman. I'm a man. Let's do this thing. <laughs> and just Rikered his way all over Vancouver <laughs> and Paris. And Pretty much, yeah. He definitely yeah, did. populated a planet with lizard people. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Star sure. Trek jokes. That was, a, that was Paris, I believe, that did that. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but that was actually one of my major issues with this movie, and always has been, is the introduction of Kate Faith character. As a, oh, this is the love of Duncan's life that he married and mm-hmm. made immortal. But that, there was, was a just... whole thing about it. he'd never been married. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. It, it was like, wait a minute, hold on. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've just spent several years of my life learning all the opposite of what you're telling me now. Uh, who the hell is this? And also, we kept waiting care? for Amanda to walk in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there towards the end, we just wanted Amanda to show up and be like, who the fuck's this bitch? And then like roll credits. <laughs> bah, 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 so bah, bah. it was, it was originally the idea was to have it branch off and cross over with Highlander, the Raven and have Amanda, but the Raven lasted a season um, because it spoiler alert, also not very good. And what? they had, I know the show is known for its strong female characters and it's good writing for women. Away. Well, Wait, maybe three female characters. <laughs> you know, that's just really unfair <laughs> at this point in time. Do you know how many drugs I've been on the last month? <laughs> well, let's see. Well, you, re- you remember Rachel, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> totally. <laughs> the beginning of this movie. <laughs> so the the problem the problem with the Raven was uh, it didn't know what it wanted to be. But after it got canceled, they also had all sorts of scheduling issues, so they couldn't get um, Elizabeth Grayson, and, and so then. They pivoted and went in a different direction. But it's the weakest part of this movie is Kate because yeah. Yeah. you don't care about her at all. <laughs> She's and not charismatic at all. Like She is not charismatic at all. No, no. I have yeah. seen uh, I have seen department store dummies with more charisma than her. Oh, Unfortunately. Damn, she's pretty, guys. Right? Like I'm sure I am, eyes. I'm like sure she's eyes. a lovely person. Okay. <laughs> but – She's the, not, this didn't she, this didn't work. <laughs> yeah. This is the problem though when you hire models to act. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And it, it, the thing about it is like there there was one interesting thing that they did with that character, which was the whole I you know, the the immortality questions of like you took that from me, you know, I can't have a normal life. The whole scene where she gets upset about uh the, the numbing sameness of it all. Like that is yeah. the only interesting thing with her. And it lasts for <laughs> ten seconds after we have the obligatory sex scene. That also, yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll we'll get to it. But yeah, there, there, there's definitely a point in the movie where I'm like, you know what? If you haven't gotten over it, you're not going to. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, right. all right, all right. So so we pop in our. Uh, I don't know. We watch it on Amazon. We we have the five pack. It's also available on the Blood Bank for anyone who knows what the Blood Bank is. Bloody Bits Horror Show. Yeah, you check it out. You guys have heard us talk about it. And uh, we get a little uh, little Lambert narration, which we always love, where he's like, mm-hmm. In a time before memory, there have always <laughs> been immortals. We, <laughs> our true origins are unknown. And I'm like, but wait, in the second movie, no, 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 no. No planet size, no nothing. It's unknown. Nope. <laughs> Skip. It's unknowable. We can't, we can't, we can't know that. No. <laughs> Don't even ask the watchers either. They have no idea. They're just kind of <laughs> documenting our sexcapades. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, but then we're in New York City, and uh, we see the, both Highlanders, you know, uh, Connor and Duncan, coming up out of the uh, the subway, and they're speaking French, of course. <laughs> and Duncan's like, "Hey, Connor, would you like a hot dog?" And Connor's like, "I must go now." <laughs> I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing here, then?" Connor, <laughs> Connor is the Gandalf the Gray, yeah, of all of uh, all of the Highlander universe. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. I have to go now for plot reasons. Oh, okay. Well, I'll meet you at eight o'clock at the bar. And I'm like, oh, are we going to see Joe's bar? <laughs> oh, I wish. I wish. How how close is New York to see Coover? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
But yeah, but you know, of course, uh, Connor gives him the good old advice, you know, watch your back. It was, it was great putting on the sunglasses, looking up all dramatic, watch your back, and walks yeah. away like, how cool is Christopher Lambert? Come on. Yeah. And then, and then we, we see, we see a woman and I'm like, wait, is that, is that Rachel? Is that Rachel from the first movie? Is she finally mm-hmm. come back? Because I had questions about where she was during uh, movies number two and three. But <laughs> but uh, I'm like, oh my god, she's back! This is gonna be great. And we're seeing like a, I, I don't know, he's watching like a like there's like a video of like the class of forty seven graduation. And I'm like, that's pretty good quality for being right? uh, you know right, yeah fifty something year old in two thousand. You know, but uh, I don't know, she's a. Uh, she, she's at the antique shop, you know, Connor Law Antique Shop, and uh, the phone's ringing, and she starts having, like, a panic attack or something. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's just just a phone ringing. What's going on? You... <laughs> Wait, no one's supposed to call here. This isn't a real business. Right? It's gotta be the this is a front. <laughs> and so she picks up the phone. Hello? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance explosion <laughs> clears yeah. out the antique shop. <laughs> yep. Yep, and and no one in New York noticed. Like a uh, like the foreigner. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And um. The, oh. One one thing you did notice, I'm sure, but this is ten years previous, so this is supposed to be like 1990 ish. Yeah. See, uh, I era. I must have missed the uh, the ten years earlier when that popped up or whatever. I must have oh, okay. written a note or something because I because then it pops up saying like present day, and I'm like. Wait, what? <laughs> but, but yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but it's it's also a way to work in um cuz Sheila Gish who played Rachel in the first movie coming back. I liked that. That was cool. Yeah. Um yeah. but it works into the timeline better because this happened before Highlander 3. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're trying. They're trying to keep some some sort of timeline consistency. Ignoring Highlander Two, um, they're not Wait doing till a great they get job. Twenty twenty four when Highlander Two happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so yeah. So so then we uh, go to present day, the sanctuary, and we uh, we see Connor. He's basically in what looks like a like a torture device or whatever. Basically, just like mm-hmm. uh, you know, like restraints, like kind of sitting up at like a like a ten degree angle or whatever standing up and he's got the, these like i don't know a horse blind or something over his eyes or something yeah and i don't know he, he starts having like a flashback to the highlands and we're in glencoe in 1555 and i, I don't know he's basically <laughs> he's basically yelling like get off my lawn or get off my land <laughs> like a mm-hmm. little grudging or whatever or um, yeah, because this is him with his first wife. This is with him with um, Heather. Heather, that's right. Remember me his... on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, somebody comes and t- uh, tells him, like, oh, your mother's dying. Or, or no, she, she's going to be burned or whatever. Oh, yeah, that, that, yeah. that's right. It's like some British assholes or something that are, like, just yelling at him, like, your mom's going to burn. Your mom's going to burn. He's like, get off my land. And, well, it, the, it's his it's his clansman. It's the McLeod clan. Oh. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Because they're they they've excommunicated him. He he was kicked out of the village after being found to be immortal because he's a he's a demon, right? He's yeah, yeah. seed of the devil. Boy's got um, the devil but, in him. Yeah. But his but his mom's still there. However, no one's taking care of her anymore because she's you know She, she spawned the, the devil spawn. from her loins. That's right. Basically, yeah. <laughs> the devil's baby mama. Wait. <laughs> But uh, yeah, basically he goes to see her and she's on her deathbed and she's like, "Ah, oh, I still love you, Connor. Don't worry about me. I'll be just fine." And uh, but then yeah, he gets uh imprisoned, and his mom is basically like put up in the town square like on a crucifix, and uh, like, "Well, your last chance to renounce your son, uh, you know, as the spawn of Satan or whatever," and blah blah blah. And she's like, "I don't know, suck a dick, dumb shits." Oh, but she has such a good line there. It's so good because yeah, it's it? like the, it's the town priest and and his son being like, you have one last chance to renounce, you know, your son. And she goes, if your God would persecute me into the next world, then I shall simply have to find a new one. 
I'm like, oh, yeah. that's cold. So, so good. Stapled, stapled to a wooden stake in the middle of a bonfire <laughs> with like black powder around her neck. And she's still just like, double birds, buddy. Like, I don't yeah. care about you. I loved it. It was so yeah. good. Yeah, the black powder necklace that they put on her or whatever. I'm like, oh, that's, <laughs> is, was that something they really did? Because that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> it, it, it makes you burn faster. It's, it's to, be, to be more humane. Sure. We'll put uh, big so yeah, air so they, quotes around that, but humane. Exactly. Make them feel better about it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, they get a little fireworks show, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they set the thing on fire, and uh, of course, you know, uh, Connor's watching the whole thing from his cell, and he's like pulling on the bars, and then one one of them, like a little one, like maybe a foot long or whatever, pops out, and uh, he tries crawling through there, but of course, the guards come in, they're like, ah, oh, get down from there, you know, the and then he just starts fucking slaying dudes with like the yes. at first the bar, then he grabs one of their swords and it's just yeah. chop, 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 chop. <laughs> it's just he just goes full Wolverine rage and just messes them up. Yeah, but then uh, then he gets up to his mom and he's like trying to like free her and stuff. Uh, but you know it's a little too late, and then boom, her little necklace of uh, powder keg or whatever goes off. Yep. But uh, that doesn't stop the rage because <laughs> uh, Connor starts killing uh, some more, including the priest that snuck up behind him. <laughs> and then sounds like, Father! No! And then, uh, yeah, basically yeah, the yeah. son then like starts attacking Connor and Connor just like holds out the sword and the guy like runs right into it. Yep. Yeah, by the way, uh, 42-year-old Christopher Lambert in this movie, uh, in this scene, is supposed to be 19 years old. He doesn't yeah. look it. <laughs> Turns out that humans age. But, uh, yeah, I love that when, when the guy, when Kel attacks him, he just runs into the sword. Like, no, that was surprisingly <laughs> easy. It's like, oh, I'm a worshiper, not a fighter. I really should have thought this one out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh yeah basically he uh, carries his mom out of there and buries her and whatnot but then uh but then we see that uh yeah uh Kel, the the son or whatever he like wakes up a little later mm -hmm. so then we cut back to present day we're at the sanctuary and uh guys come rolling up on motorcycles and then we see the monks of the sanctuary they start pulling out uzis and shit <laughs> Because it was the late '90s, early 2000s, you had to have monks with technology <laughs> or weapons. That was required. That's right, cyberpunks or cyber monks. That's what it was. That's cyber right. yeah. monks. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. They seem to like take out a few of the guys, but then, yeah, there's a blast. I, 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 yeah, they, basically, Donnie Yen shows up and they like shoot at his motorcycle and it explodes but that just propels him <coughs> into a like a flying dragon kick or whatever and starts whooping everybody's ass <laughs> basically I, I i don't know uh this is when kel shows up and he's like i say like, uh, a mysterious figure shows up and is like i don't care about the rules where's connor because uh, yeah. i i guess you know can't kill on holy ground and all that fun stuff though okay you, you you've seen all the series and stuff the yep. closest thing because in the series, killing on holy ground is really just like an honor thing. Like it happens no. a bunch. No, no, no. Um, no, it there's a whole episode the dedicated series. to how things blow the fuck up. Okay, they it, kill each other on holy ground. Okay, because yeah, the third movie, like when uh, when he's fighting uh, Kane or whatever, and the swords explode, it's like, oh, okay, so that's what happens. But uh, no, I, actually, one of one of my favorite all time Highlander moments in in anything is uh, an exchange between Duncan and Joe in the series talking about fighting on holy ground where Joe tells him, look, you know what happened? The, the, nobody, nobody's fought on holy ground uh, in a long time. He's like, why? What happened last time? And Joe might have been talking to Richie, uh, I think, or something. But he goes, yeah, the last time that happened was Pompeii in 79 AD. Uh and I was like, Oh, that's a cool bit of lore, like working that in there. That it was two yeah. immortals fighting on holy ground that caused Vesuvius to erupt. <laughs> that's fucking cool. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. so in the theatrical version of this movie, the sanctuary is on holy ground, and Mythos actually mentions that. And that pissed off a lot of people because that's like the one rule you don't break. So yeah. they took that line out. It's technically in the in the version that we watched not holy ground where the sanctuary is. Uh, which though, is which is stupid because like that was 
one of my immediate things, like, why would you not put the sanctuary on holy ground? It's so right. easy. Yeah. It turns mm-hmm. out it's super easy to find holy ground because it's they're not prescribing to a specific uh, religion. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they start getting into like, oh, but all of Mother Earth is holy ground to some and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, well, I guess nobody's fighting roll credits. But... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that's a that's a plot point where the logic breaks down the more you think about it. But yeah. um, I still I still like it. So, but yeah, I agree. Like the fact that the sanctuary is technically not on holy ground is really dumb of the Watchers, yeah. and the Watchers are usually smarter than that. But um, you know, it's uh, it is what it is. I, I'd like it not being on holy ground because at least then, otherwise, everything should there should have been like a just a smoldering <laughs> crater left. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically they go in the sanctuary and there's what like a dozen, no worries, like like a like a dozen immortals like strapped up like Connor was like on the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in the restraints with the head covers or whatever. And they're asking where's Connor, and then they just start taking heads and like all the quickenings start going into Kel or whatever. And then we cut to uh, Duncan and uh, uh, meditating, practicing. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> but then, um, I don't know. Yeah, he he, he kind of gets a feeling, though, of like, you know, <laughs> it's as if a dozen lives suddenly cried out and then were silenced <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> like, like Alderaan just blew up or whatever. But then uh, we cut to the Watchers and they're doing cleanup duty, like, you know, packing up all the immortals without their heads. And uh, Duncan's in Paris now. Hey, or London or something. He's somewhere in Europe. I don't. Or was it London? Where they put it. Yeah, I, I think it was yeah. supposed to be London. They didn't do a, this. This movie jumps all over the globe. Um, yeah. Because it's like it's set in London instead of Paris for whatever reason. Um, but it's shot in Romania and there's parts of it in New York. And it, the last, I mean, we'll get to it. But there's a there's a big jump in the last fight, um, even. So <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking around Europe somewhere. Um, and then a payphone starts ringing, and I'm like, "Cool, just keep walking." <laughs> Gives a shit, you know. But no, he's got to stare at it for a while, all dramatically. And he answers, yeah. and uh, there's there's a lady on the other end who says, "Yeah, you know, whatever you're fearing, fear the worst." Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. Who are you again? Yeah. And why why am I answering your phone call? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, wrong number. Like, and yeah. <laughs> so then he goes to see mythos and uh you know and oh, uh, like i mentioned the first time we watched this movie hadn't seen the series no idea who this mythos guy was but luckily he's there saying like i need your help i need a five the help of a five thousand year old immortal <laughs> you know blah yep. blah, blah. <laughs> yeah yep again got to catch that audience up they don't they're not gonna know who that is and it, it's clunky uh but mythos is such a such a fun character in the show um, and just the idea of him is really cool. So it was good to see him in the movie, but he's him and Joe are just underused. Yeah. They're, they're basically just exposition. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, but, um, but yeah, basically, you know, he's like, Hey, I, I had these nightmares about, you know, a bunch of people being killed. He's like, yeah. So there's this place called the sanctuary and it was ambushed <laughs> last night. Um, and, uh, yeah, you should, you should probably go check it out. I don't know. We'll find out what's going on. But then we cut to, I, I, I don't know, we're in New York again. Um, there's a taxi. And then we're having a flashback yep. to uh, Ireland, was it Kildre? Ireland, 1712. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, okay, movie, you got to focus just a little bit. Let's, let's mm-hmm. <laughs> more, more than four seconds in a particular location. <laughs> yeah, we get a little scattered there. Um, and again, I get what they're going for, right? They want to build that relationship between Connor and Duncan. So Duncan's reminiscing because he feels like something's gone wrong. And then Mythos is telling him about, uh, well, the sanctuary and it was obliterated last night and Connor was there. And so Duncan's like, well, okay, Connor was in the sanctuary. I guess I'm going to go to his house in New York then. Yeah. And, and, and there's definitely a scene like when he's in the taxi where it's like the opening to the TV show taxi where they're like crossing the bridge. It's like the same angle. Yeah. I, was, I was expecting the music started like, do, 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 do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he has this flashback to 1712 where uh, basically WWE superstar Edge and uh, some other guy are like uh, trying to get tolls from this hot chick in a, in a mm-hmm. carriage. 
And, uh, yeah, but basically, um, Duncan and Connor, they both show up and start talking with them, like take their money and then a fight happens. Um, and yeah, they, they're just toying with them basically the sword fight and then edge like lifts a rock. And then <laughs> I, I, I think it was Duncan, like holds the sword to his crotch. And, uh, the, the other one says, I ah, seems to have lost your edge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All they needed to do was turn and just wink at the camera. That's all we were missing there. Do, do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then, uh, yeah, we're in New York, and uh, Duncan's checking out the ruins of uh, Connor's old antique shop, and I'm like, it's been ten years, and they haven't rebuilt anything in that spot? Come no. on, guys. This is, must have been in the Bronx. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he's just wandering around or whatever. And we see the uh, the wonderful conversation pit room where uh, Connor yeah, has yeah, yeah. some of his incredible wares. And <laughs> that's one thing with the Highlander series. Like, they always have the, the conversation pits. And I'm like, man, whatever happened to those? I know, yeah. right? That's, a, that's an interior design thing we need to bring back. Right? The sunken, the sunken living room. Yeah. <laughs> also if you notice like the whole building's bombed out right because it all blew up except that room is pristine there isn't even oh, yeah. dust in there i don't know how that happened yeah you must have bomb... like the, the lead bomb doors or whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like in case of apocalypse lock these like it's a, a bug out shelter it's or a, something it's yeah. a big panic room yeah there we go <laughs> Uh, but then we get another flashback. Uh, they're in Italy in 1661, and they're, I don't know, practicing their fencing or whatever. And they're just talking about what the quickening is, like, in public or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, hey, okay, we got to fill everybody in. But now half of Italy knows <laughs> that you guys are immortals. And it's like, oh, yeah, the quickening, where, you know, you, you take somebody's head and uh, uh, gain all their knowledge and strength or whatever. Yeah. My my headcanon for that scene is just they handpicked everyone to be in that building that doesn't speak a lick of English. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, you know, they, there's a whole thing. They're doing the practice, and then uh, Connor ends up, like, giving him a sword. And then he's like, okay, well, attack me. And then we get, you know, Chekhov's unstoppable move or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. there's no way this isn't coming back several times in this movie. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and looking at it, I'm like, uh, uh, uh if you if you say it's unstoppable, Steve's I don't know. Like, I think I could block that. I feel like I could just headbutt you, and that would be like game over. But yeah, <laughs> over it felt me. like it felt like they they tried to block it and frame it so you couldn't really tell exactly what was happening, and then they could 100%. just hand wave it away. Yeah, um, they yeah, should have just bad. gotten like. Some good martial arts guys to teach them a cool move. I mean, it's a shame well, Donnie and, Yen wasn't on set. Right? And and the thing is, like, Adrian Paul is an incredible martial artist. And so yeah. Donnie Yen's there. One of the um, gang members in that gang with Donnie Yen, the older Asian guy, is actually Duncan, or is Adrian Paul's trainer. Yeah. So, like, they had yeah. that. But they're working with the limitations of, you know, 40-something-year-old uh, Christopher Lambert, Christopher Lambert with myopia like he can't see anything so because that's that's one of my favorite bits of trivia ever is that he is incredibly nearsighted yeah and he can't wear contacts so he's doing these sword fights basically blind um which is horrifying to me <laughs> but he's doing them so yeah was but it, yeah was the, it Clancy Brown to like nearly <laughs> lost a couple finger or Ironside I think it was Ironside uh, it was Ironside yeah um, but yeah, the, the unstoppable move is total bullshit, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, well. Uh, but yeah, but then, uh, we come back to modern day cause, uh, Duncan's got that feeling, <gasps> Kate, what are you doing here? And she's like, remember me? Remember our wedding? I'm like, wait, what? And what? So we... <laughs> That's against canon. <laughs> and then we start getting a flashback, but then all of a sudden she just like drop kicks him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and I love know. too, that she walked into the room and he's like, who are you? Yeah. Like, no, I'm sorry. You recognize her. Like we've established that the man rec- remembers everyone. Yeah. So, to be fair, they both cut their hair <laughs> starting in season yes. six. So. Which is a shame. Goddamn shame. I agree. <laughs> it's, it's like the story was like Samson's hair. <laughs> yep. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so she kicks and then all of a sudden yeah, uh, motorcycle guys start pulling up and there's Four of the goofiest looking villains I've seen in my fucking life. <laughs> uh, there's the the one dude's got like the blonde hair on top and like the skinny mutton chop 
facial hair thing going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, you, you know what that character's name was, by the way? Uh, it's no. never said in the movie, but in the credits, his name is Cracker Bob. <laughs> Cracker Bob. Guys, picture a character named Cracker Bob. You're seeing him. Right? <laughs> yep, that's yeah. exactly what you're seeing. Uh, but then one of the guys, of course, is Rockefeller CEO Dame Dash. <laughs> and yep. he's just in the back like, hey, we're going to kick your ass now, all right? And then they start fighting. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Duncan holds his own for a little bit, you know, against, like, the, the four or five attackers there. But then Jin K shows up. <gasps> Jin K From the, I don't know, Shuang Dynasty or whatever? The Jin K's uh, right-hand man from <laughs> thousands of years ago? Like, yeah, that's me. And then we get, uh, I'll just throw it out there, the best fight in the movie, I think. Just the quick little, oh, like, hell yeah. minute minute and 15 seconds or whatever of Adrian Paul and Donnie Yen fighting. I mean... Like for Adrian Paul, that had to have been a thrill to work with Donnie Yen because he knew who he was by that point. Donnie Yen is the man, right? Like he is on the Mount Rushmore. He is he is on the podium of like ultimate martial art action star movie people. I you know he's he's up there with your Bruce Lee, Jet Li, Donnie Yen, Jackie, Jackie Chan, Chan, like yeah. uh, Michelle Yeoh, you know all of them. But Don, there's something about Donnie Yen. He just is cool. And this oh, yeah. fight between the two of them is dope. Like, it's really good. And it's got, like, one of the things we do on the Highlander show a lot is we would talk about the fights and, like, the storytelling of the fight. Because when you look at the choreography, they're always trying, kind of like with the music, they were trying to do something different each time. Yeah. Because sword fight, sword fight, sword fight, they can get old, they can get a little stale. So he's got to keep mixing it up. This one is great because they're, they're both so good at what they're doing. And then to have it go into a second stage where they go, they just drop weapons and go full on um, hand to hand. It was really, really good. Yeah, and, absolutely. I mean, it just, you know, it's a testament to two people that are incredibly good at what they do. Yeah. And then, and then eventually, we, you know, after getting oh almost too much of a good thing for like almost two minutes, then mm-hmm. uh, we hear somebody go, enough. And, and they're like, Shang Tsung, where'd you come from? <laughs> <laughs> but now we see the a dark cloaked figure descending the stairs and and he's like, you know, starting to like monologue and blah blah blah. And you know, Adrian Paul's kinda like, Who's this asshole? And then Dame Dash just pulls out a fucking gun, pop, 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 starts shooting uh with Duncan. Oh. Was this like <laughs> was, was this his character's first day on the job? Is that, what, I assume is so. that what was happening? Was this like his initiation and he failed? Because, come on. It, it was so, oh, I laugh so hard every time at that. I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot. He just pulls the gun out and shoots him a bunch. Yeah, it's like, like he must have been working with the Watchers or something. Because he, he basically saves <laughs> right. Duncan at that moment. Because he like, shoots him so much he goes flying out the window and then, you know, falls and whatever. <laughs> but, that, but, of course, the, the cloaked figure guy, he's like, I told you not to do that. And he's like, yeah, but I don't listen to shit. So whatever. <laughs> and so then he gets fucking decapitated and, uh, yeah, we get another quickening and a boom. Meanwhile, Duncan's Duncan's falling out the window and he's like skewered by rebar or something at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. So he's like dead, like just, just stuck there, like waiting to come back just to, I don't know, try to like pull himself off of it or whatever, but nope. Cool little van pulls up full of watchers and they, you know, pull out the little chainsaw or whatever, or Jaws of Life, I don't know what, just kind of, like, cutting the rebar, getting them out of there, throwing them in the back of the van and get them out just in time, right? Mm-hmm. And, and this whole time with, like, the building explosion from the quickening and all this other stuff, I'm like, and there's no one else in the entire city of New York. <laughs> all right, nope. got it. No one in New York cares at all. Yeah. I think my note was actually like, nobody's going to notice that this building blew up again. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the same thing I had with, with the uh, the series, like you know, Seacouver or whatever, blah blah blah. Like nobody is on the streets of Paris at night, <laughs> not one person. Yeah. No. For all the explosions and sword fights and car chases or whatever, it's always just yeah. like and and it was one of those like we would make fun of it because we would uh, we would try to figure out okay maybe. You know, did they did they write it in to where they would be at like a stadium when no one was there, so they yeah. could be, or like a, a a warehouse in the at the docks so that was empty, <laughs> something like that. Oh, that um, old abandoned warehouse that still has the fires burning in the background. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, like they always have to do that, but I love when they have it. Like just in New York, 
in a building. And the thing, like, it's not subtle at all. And not only that, but uh, it's, what, 10 years to the day after that building blew up, it blows up again. I, I yeah. think somebody's taking notice of this by now. <laughs> They're like, damn squatters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we then see where uh, Duncan is, and uh, he, he basically wakes up in one of those, uh, uh, the, the restraints or whatever, like uh, Connor was in. Basically, some guy starts injecting Windex into his fucking nose. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but they're like, no, there must always be two of you. We can't have Kel killing everybody so he gets the prize or whatever. Um, yeah, you know, that, that's the whole thing of Sanctuary is they, they hide the immortals so that Kel can never fight him. Cause you know, if you just kept him on Holy ground or whatever, it wouldn't be a thing, but, mm-hmm. I don't know. Or, but or I guess, that, or I guess at the very least he could break into the Holy ground, you know, drag those things off of Holy ground and then do whatever they're going to do. But you know, yeah. But, but again, like the concept of the sanctuary is a cool idea. The, the idea of Watchers doing stuff like this goes all the way back to when the Watchers were introduced, so that's nothing new. They tried to give you the idea that the Watchers are following Duncan, and that's why they pull up at the, that very moment where he gets impaled on the rebar yeah. and grab him and take him. Like They just didn't do a very good job of executing that, so you're sort of... You're a little bit confused as to like, well, wait, how, how we moved awful quick on this, and now he's injecting Windex up. Okay, sure, why not? I mean, <laughs> it's like, whatever, right, dude. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is a shame bit. because they literally did like two entire seasons yeah. on Duncan being hunted by the Watchers. They could have just yeah. stolen bits from. Mm-hmm. And guess what? We all just would have been happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Instead, uh, the Windex starts uh, causing uh, Duncan to have some nightmares and, I don't know, demons are involved or whatever. Um, We get a little flashback of him meeting Connor in uh, 1625, but then, who's there to save him? Guys, it's Joe! Yeah! Yeah. (laughs) Joe, his buddy watcher who doesn't get involved except every single episode of the TV show. Starting season two. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But, uh... But yeah, basically he frees them and then uh, they both kind of hobble out of there. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> Don't slow, over. slow speed escape. Yeah. But, and then they hop in the car and Mythos is driving. And I'm like, Mythos, why did you go in there and free him right. and get out there quicker? Uh, <laughs> you why don't you send the guy drive? with no legs to get the drugged up guy? What were you thinking <laughs> right. there, Mythos? I'm pretty sure Joe can drive. He'll be okay. <laughs> Look, I've stuck around for 5,000 years. I know how to stay alive. <laughs> that's, that's exactly. He does have that great line, though, where he hands him his sword, which was also apparently not in the theatrical version. I, I don't remember if I've ever seen that version. But the, the shot of him handing him his sword, I think they added in, so it made sense how Duncan has his own sword again later. As a sword back? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But I love that. <laughs> I, I liberated this from their lost and found. But there's blood on it. Well, I didn't say it was easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then, uh, yeah, they, they get out of there. They drive off, and then we get the exposition dump of, uh, you know, Joe's like, look, we, uh, the, this Kel guy, he, he's pretty bad news. They're like, oh, psh, whatever. I've killed a shit ton of immortals. Like, one a week for over 400 years. We're looking at, like, 20,000 heads. Am I right? right? And he's like... Yeah. You, oh yeah well, we keep track of that stuff do you know how many heads you've taken and <laughs> i expect him to be like i don't know shit thousands man like nope you got 262 or you, know, you got 174 and connor he's got 262 not bad right kel here has 661 you don't stand Which, a fucking chance yeah <laughs> I, again from a lore perspective i kind of like that the uh the watchers have these records Right. Yeah. And they and they and they're using them. I love the line. It's kind of like can handicapped and horse handicapped and horses. I know. But uh, hey, what are you going to do? Like yeah. <laughs> that. It's this movie is indicative of a lot of the Highlander stuff where when it's good, there's stuff that's really cool like that. You know, this whole idea because like Mythos was a watcher. Right. He spent a long time as a watcher as Adam Pearson. Um, yeah. So he would know a bunch of this stuff. Joe is doing that. And Duncan's like, I don't know. I just kind of live and do my thing and um they were also trying to work in the whole idea of kel if kel i think early on in the script if kel got to 666 kills something would happen yeah so that's where that 661 (laughs) number came in have you ever seen uh the one starring jet lee and jason statham yep 
Yeah, it, it, it's basically yeah. an early 2000s mm-hmm. Highlander ripoff, and it's it's also Kinda great neat. for completely different reasons, but yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it was like 125 or whatever, like there's 126 multiverses and yeah. killing off yeah. all the other Jet Lees, make them super strong, and it, it was basically the exact same plot, which is like, and it came out, what, a, the year after this, I think. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> But, uh, but, but, and that, and the other thing, like, you know, me and Izzy were talking about too, it's like, it's not just, you know, 661, like, he's got the power of 661 people. Like, no, each one of those also killed, like, dozens, if not hundreds of people or whatever. And so yep. it's like, man, th- th- this guy's, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, so that's the thing, like, this guy may have, you know, his 661 kills or whatever, but Duncan has, like, the, the, like, the like fucking ancient Indian, yeah. Yep. Uh, the dark oh, yeah. quickening guy, Richie. He's he's got Richie, and Richie's like six. He's got um. Yeah, well, R- that R- means Richie he's got the special six, needs exactly. guy inside Richie him. six, including the special needs guy. Um. Yeah, but he's got like like Duncan's taking out some old ass dudes. Uh, his oh, buddy, yeah. the psychotherapist. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um. Like like, d- I think Duncan has more kings inside of him. <laughs> his blood's full of more kings <laughs> yeah so joe's basically like hey you know you, you just gotta like hide from kill that's probably your best bet but duncan's like no i don't think so and then you know, they just like drive off or whatever and then we see the silver cup building from the the ending of the first movie apparently they Hello. rebuilt and put a new sign up yeah good for them that insurance yeah. money paid off i do i do love that little that little bit then they just basically drive into the fog and they're uh, looking for, um, you know, they're like wandering through the graveyard looking for uh, shit. Who's he wants was? to he wants to see Connor's body. Right. Because yeah. Duncan doesn't That's Duncan true. wants confirmation that Connor is dead. So Joe and Mythos take him there. And then I love they get to the graveyard and he's like, all right, guys, end of the line. Like, why? <laughs> why do they have to leave? They can come with you. Like, they know Connor, but whatever. <laughs> Yes, but you know when I wander alone, that's when all the sword fighting shit happens. Like, yeah, we want to watch. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, why can't they go with you? Oh, because you filmed the scenes without them already. And yeah. Now, okay, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> this is what we call the plot establishing shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he gets to the grave, and then uh, I don't know. We hear someone say, <laughs> "There can only be one." <gasps> Connor, <gasps> Connor, you're standing here, and. <laughs> I don't know. We start going into um, uh, Connor's sad story of like, why? Why would you go to the sanctuary? And he's like, because everyone I care about dies and everything I touch turns to shit and blah, 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 fucking blah. <laughs> you have to take my head, Connor. It's the only way you can survive. And then he's like, well, but wait, why? I thought you were dead. Like, no, they, they, they just let me go. Like, why would they let you go? And I'm like, because he's fucking bait. <laughs> <laughs> And wouldn't you know it, Kel, Kate, and the rest of the crew, or no, I guess it's just Kel and Kate kind of show up, and uh, I love how yeah. Kel says, so here we are. <laughs> like yeah. a of TV All right, episode. so real quick, I just got to give some props to Bruce Payne, because my boy Bruce went full ham for this movie. He was totally. just like, scenery? Give me all the scenery. I will chew every bit of it. He is going for it and god love them it's a choice um it, it's just it's so much fun because you can tell he he's just relishing he's yeah. yeah and i guess making the movie he got bronchitis and they had to shut down for a bit and then he didn't want to go back to romania so they oh, had to okay. shoot a bunch of stuff that, and that explains why like 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 when he's model because this came out the same year as uh that double uh dungeons and dragons movie that he was you yep. know, blue lips or whatever and <laughs> And he, mm-hmm. yeah, he was going full of, like, like he understood the assignment in that one, too. Him and Jeremy Irons, balls to the wall. But, mm-hmm. but I guess in this one, he was a little more subdued, I guess, yeah, probably because of the bronchitis or whatever. He just couldn't, I don't know, yeah, get so the diaphragm up, enough or something. Yeah, he ended up doing, instead of the projected angry acting, he does the, the whispery angry acting. Um, <laughs> the, the other so. end of the uh, Eddie Redmayne in Jupiter yes. Ascending or whatever. <laughs> exactly. Um, he would yeah. whisper and then explode. <laughs> but what you know, I like the motivations for the character are a little weird, right? Because he's just like he's pissed that yeah. Connor killed his dad. 
Like, basically, that's what it is. I killed your mom, but then you killed my dad, yeah. so now I'm going to kill you. Yeah, that, that was right? the whole thing where it's like, oh, wait, you, you want to kill me because I killed your dad? You killed my mom, asshole. <laughs> like, right. yeah, that's totally different, though, because women are just possessions. And but, uh, exactly. uh, Let's delete that scene. We're not going to film that one. <laughs> right. But, yeah, it's like, you killed my dad. You killed my mom. I guess we're even. All right, have a good day. Handshake and walk away. All right. All right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll see you down the road. There could only be one. <laughs> next time hey hey but what i liked was like at least you know kel is like no i'm gonna have the full-on revenge angle of like what's the worst thing you could do to an immortal is make them keep living but destroy everything around them yeah, so exactly. again from 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 like a timeline standpoint it kind of doesn't fit in but at nah. the same time you can sort of hand wave and head cannon your way into being like nah he just playing the long game but I like the idea of he doesn't want to kill Connor. He wants to torture Connor for a lot longer, which is why he didn't kill him in the sanctuary. He just wanted him out of the sanctuary so he could keep messing with his life. Yeah, so, so he could he see loved. what he was doing to the people he cared about. Like, like, like he killed Rachel, but if we found out that he ended up killing, uh, oh shit, the chick from the first movie, uh, uh, Roxanne? No. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't think yeah. of her name now. Yeah, fuck. Uh, or well, Roxanne Hart's the actress, but yeah, uh, Brenda, yeah. Brenda, that's right. Brenda. Yeah. If yeah. We find out he killed Brenda, Brenda. Or something, like in a flashback, like, Oh, okay, mm-hmm. here we go. <laughs> and we find out like he killed the, uh, the woman and the adopted son from the third movie that yeah. like, just, like not around <laughs> anymore. Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Where's John, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, I just, I liked, I liked that as a, it, it gives some stakes at least, for what Connor's going through. Like he, Connor figures out, right. That Kel's not going to stop. Uh, but just Bruce Payne. I mean, I just, mm, the whole scene in the, in the graveyard is great. Cause he is just going for it. Yeah. And it's the whole thing. Like they're on Holy ground or whatever, you know, a graveyard or whatever, but like swords are drunk. Cause you know, they're talking shit and there's more talk. And then, uh, fucking Kel says, uh, he's monologuing or whatever. And then he ends it with, don't you want to be inside me? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what's happening now? <laughs> Ooh, are we are we gonna get a High- real sword fight? <laughs> Highlander after dark. Yeah. But I do and like that here they. We are. <laughs> I like that they walk. They they keep mentioning like Duncan keeps saying they're on holy ground, and then there's a cut, and they, it's basically like they just walked on the other side of the pl- of the property yeah. line. Yeah, they're they're in the parking lot, or you know, like yeah. the other side of the like, gate, or whatever. <laughs> Connor, it's consecrated ground. Oh, they didn't consecrate that over there, so we can go fight over here. Then you have uh, Connor and Kel fight for a little bit, but Kel's just like fucking teasing him. He's basically like, "Yeah, your living will be my prize, and then I'll just you know destroy everything around you." Ah, uh-huh. like like you'll live, but uh, Duncan, your buddy over there, he's fair game. And then yeah, they just he just kind of vanishes or something after that. I I don't know. I, I like looked okay. down and like write a note and looked up and like Duncan was already like where'd they go? <laughs> so it's interesting, right? Because there's a sound effect when he walks out of frame that sounds like some sort of a portal. Yeah. And there was, if you've ever watched the trailer for this movie, there's a whole bunch of shit in the trailer that is not in the movie where he has like supernatural powers. Like there's yeah. a shot in the trailer where he stops a sword midair with like telekinesis. There's, there's a shot in the trailer where um, Connor slices him in half with us and and he just turns into two versions of himself like all this crap yeah. that when I was looking at pictures for this like there were so many things I'm like wait th- this wasn't in the movie but yeah I guess it was all yeah taken from the trailer or whatever and <laughs> like one of the rumors is that they shot a bunch of stuff for the trailer just to make it look more interesting I think they initially had him have those powers and then someone was like uh guys guys we did that in the last movie sort of thing and also kind of fucking dumb so maybe we'll do something different but they left in that sound effect so i think in the original like idea for that scene at the um at at the cemetery he disappears in a portal with kate at the end of it yeah like thanos style and they just left the sound effect in there and then they cut like they had another shot of kate just standing there for whatever reason there was yeah also uh, (laughs) a, a, a lot of reused shots in this movie i don't know if you noticed that or not but there's a lot of times where it's like, no, we've I've seen this exact shot already used in the movie. Like there's two or three times yeah. where they use where Duncan's standing in front of the um the payphone early on. 
they cut back to that. Like they use that again somewhere and just all sorts of stuff. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah, the thing where you get the noise and like he's gone, but Kate's still standing there. Like if it's a yeah. portal thing, it's like he'll 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 be back when he realizes he forgot me. <laughs> portal opens up, hand reaches out, just yeah. grabs her. <laughs> Yoink! Yeah, <laughs> come on, woman. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, th- then from there we get a flashback to uh, you know the uh, Duncan and Kate getting married, and uh, mm. Connor's there too, and uh, I don't know they're they're chatting about Kate, and he's basically like, "So you 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 know right? Like you get the feeling about her? Like yeah yeah I got a I got a sense that she's an immortal, but it's great because then we can." you know, live together forever and be in love and blah, blah, blah. It's like, but you know that the only <laughs> when she has to die violently or whatever, or she's going to be like super old. And he's like, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. It's just it's not something you just kind of blurt out. Right. <laughs> I like, it's kind of the dumb little conversation of like, so you, you just going to like surprise her and kill her and hope that works out. Or are you going to talk to her about it? Like, I mean, eventually, I'll, I'll, I, th- there's a, there's a delicacy to this, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the whole, and, and again, we already kind of went over this, but like, none of this makes a damn bit of sense based on what we know about Duncan from six years of the show, right? Yeah. Like Duncan's smarter than that. He wouldn't, he, he would have talked to her well before ever getting married, but again, Duncan never got yeah. married. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. Or so he says, he, he almost got married to Tess. Um, and then also he tells like Dr. Ann and uh, FBI chick like on date number two, like, oh, by the way, I'm a mortal and I'm super cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you know, you, you make mistakes, you learn from those. He made yeah. the mistake of killing Kate before talking to her about immortality. So he's like, well, I'm not, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. You, you, I, I don't know. I, yeah, the, the way you go about that is uh, kind of, the, okay, you're, babe. Steve. If I knew you were immortal and I yeah. wanted to show you blah, 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 or whatever, explain yeah. it to you a little bit. You know the scene from the first Highlander movie where uh, uh, Connor holds the knife, like, you know, and it's like, here, Brenda, stab, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. stab me. I, I'm immortal. Ah, and then, like, yeah. he's fine. And she sees it heal. And I'm like, and guess what? You are too. Do you trust me? And if she's like, well, no, I'm not going to let you stab me in the gut. And I'm like, Fine, I'll go at the old-fashioned way. Lead right into the sex scene. But... <laughs> Pretty much. I feel like in the, the series, wasn't there there one where Duncan was trying to explain to somebody and he let them shoot him? Yeah, oh, it was yeah. Tessa. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. He does that with yeah. Tessa early on. Okay, and, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, it was like, like there's just... I don't know, there's literally any other way to do this. And then instead of just crying in the corner that she freaked out and you knew she was going to freak out, maybe go after her yeah in- right. instead it's basically uh luke skywalker okay. over ben solo like ready to like chop the head off but of course oh wakes up oh <laughs> and then yeah. becomes oh. our fader but yeah it's uh by the way uh last jedi you hacks i don't know <laughs> uh so yeah um uh, yeah back in the present day like he goes and sees kate uh but her name is faith now and she's i guess a fashion designer or some shit i don't know Keeping a low uh, profile, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Giant, you know, eighteen foot letters saying "faith" on a wall, and yeah, I don't know. But yeah, they have a whole conversation about uh, if if I could make it right, I could, and like I I, I don't care, whatever. Um, and it's like, what? Well, I understand you not liking me, but why do you hang out with Kel? Because Kel's the only one that hates like me. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I, I guess that's a reason. And then I guess Kate lives in a fucking cathedral because <laughs> she just wanders in. There's nobody else there. She goes, walks on upstairs and then, oh, okay, Kel's there too. I'm like, man, that cathedral looks like it's pretty well. T- oh, God, yeah. Dog. Thank you, dog. Well, Sorry, the dog just whacked the, the laptop. laptop. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, oh yeah, they get pretty well maintained. I guess they just kind of like, yeah, we don't go to that one. We go to the the... Uh, the mega church down the street now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Ba- ba- basically, she walks in and Kel's like, "You were with him, weren't you?" <laughs> and 
<laughs> I love the line, the oh, woman, in, uh, woman is a temple built on a sewer. And I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Right that shit down. Yeah, he's in there. Like, she walks into the apartment and there's there's Kel in a Burt Reynolds pose with leather gloves on for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. and, all right, cool. I, I, I think I know how this scene's going to end. Nope, I don't. Because then it just sort of cuts away and she shows up at Duncan's hotel room yeah so uh, uh, but still, after he says that you know the woman is a temple built on a sewer or whatever then he's like what if i just took your face off and i'm like oh, is he gonna take her face off take your face <laughs> gonna wear it like leather face or something it's gonna be great uh but instead she's like you can't have me and he's like oh sweetie i already have <laughs> and again just i mean He's he's on a scale of one to ten. He's somewhere around like a nineteen. He's yeah. just just hamming it up, and I love it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like you were saying, then after that, the scene just kind of ends, and we see Duncan, you know, sleeping like he does. And uh, <laughs> but then he gets that feeling of, oh no, someone's coming in my <laughs> wide open doors at the gym or my apartment upstairs, you know, and see Coover. But uh, it's Kate, and he's like. Are we are we fighting or fucking? Like like there's a little bit of look like what uh what you doing here? But uh, apparently she's come for Pound Town, and we <laughs> we get it like a flat uh like flashback to like I guess their wedding night, and then back and forth between that and the present day. Yep. <laughs> we flash back and they're like I don't know doing the Mormon sheet sex or whatever, where they're both like fully <laughs> dressed and on top of each other, and then we cut to present day and it's like boobs and butt like pure just naked music video kind of sex scene yep <laughs> like oh this is great I mean, like like the candles everywhere like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember this from highlander 3 <laughs> mm-hmm. yep it's not a highlander movie if they don't have a gratuitous sex scene in it and uh speaking of stabbing then we go back to the wedding night and uh Duncan standing over her with a knife while she's sleeping is just like forgive me my love and then just stabs her in the gut and of course she wakes up like ah what the fuck I mean you know it's a, it's a reasonable response to being woke up by getting stabbed in the chest and then like in present day like hey I'm 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 sorry about what I did and she's like you had no right you had no right or whatever I don't know and then she I'm just leaving. Kinda, yeah, it, it, she just kind of wanders off, and I'm like, wah, wah, wah. All right, well, I guess that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see if I could feel something again. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> and I'm like, so, 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 so did you? Or was it like a hot dog in a hallway situation? Like, oh, oh, yeah. <coughs> and was you're it, leaving. Uh, right. well, was it any good? You're, you're, you're leaving, I guess. It was, uh, Wait, come you, back. Uh, you, want, you, want, you want a Gatorade or something? Yeah. <laughs> So then uh, Kate goes to see uh, Jen or whatever. And, of course, Donnie Yen, he's a smart guy in this one. He's like, you know, eventually Kel's just going to kill us. You know that, right? Like, we should probably, like, not be around. Smash cut to them, uh, you know, Kel and the crew having a nice little dinner. Yeah. And Kel doing a toast. And he's like, hey, guys. Oh, look, I have a sword. Nope, it's two swords mid <laughs> in the monologue. He just starts taking fucking hits. Sing, 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 quickening for days. Yep. He's like, hey, guys, check out this cool sword I have. Um, now, this was another one that I read about, and um, I think, I know I've seen this uh, this version or this alternate scene at least once, but um, it's on, I think, the DVDs or something, that Donnie Yen's character actually doesn't, because in the, in the cut, you basically... You know, Kel took his head, right? He takes everybody's yeah. head. Yeah, yeah. The original intent was that um, Jin K kind of figured out, oh, nope, shit's about to go down. And he took his sword, rammed it into a wall, and decapitated himself. Oh. Uh, all right. So that, so that Kel, because again, this was when they were still kind of going along the lines of like, Kel has to get to 666. And he was at 661 and he's going to kill five of them. Yeah, those and, five. Yeah, and yeah. get there. And Jin K was basically like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, not gonna work for me. I'm gonna take care of this myself." Knowing <laughs> he wasn't gonna ticket. get out of it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Which I thought was really cool. And instead, no, we just get like a they stare yeah. at each other, and then they cut away, and they come back, and he's got bloody swords. Yeah, except we, and we've also already established like in the series and stuff like that doesn't work because 
even if you you know take your own head or whatever it, it mm-hmm. goes to the closest you know and there's someone in proximity yeah, you're granted yeah it's basically but, is there somebody within a within 500 feet uh yeah, yeah. okay they get it <laughs> yeah yeah they they could be like two buildings over, like having tea and crumpets at a cafe. All of a sudden, like you just take your own head. It's like, oh, ah, ah. yeah. <laughs> How do I explain oh. that to the girls? <laughs> yeah. Right. But oh, that's yeah. that's a scene I want. I want a scene of somebody like an immortal sitting in a cafe in Paris, and all of a sudden just gets a quickening out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they get that feeling of like there's one nearby, and then you hear somebody like in a, in a room, like you know. 30, 40 feet away, like, fuck this. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh my God, what happened? Like, uh, I, I don't know. It must have been static or something. I don't know. It was weird. weather balloon. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I'm leave now. <laughs> Aurora Here Borealis at this time of day in this <laughs> part of the world. <laughs> Entirely in your tiramisu? <laughs> yes. <laughs> May I have some? <laughs> no. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. So, <laughs> oh, hi, buddy. So your dog's uh trying to take my spot. You gotta try to kick my spot <laughs> again. Hey, good job. Buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> so where are we? Oh yeah. So yeah, heads roll. Um, and then we cut to uh, Duncan uh, on a rooftop because I, I don't know. I guess it, he sensed a disturbance in the forest again or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he goes to the top and oh, there's Connor. Hey, what, what, how you doing, buddy? You know, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Connor's basically like, you know, we can't be Cal alone. Yeah, I was worrying about that. Like, we well, got any ideas? Like, as a matter of fact, I do. And they start fighting and he's like, no, oh, only one of us can fight him at a time. And it's going to be you. You're going to have to kill me and absorb my power and blah, blah, blah. And of course, Duncan's like, no, I could never. You're my kinsman and blah, blah, blah. I, I don't know. It, <laughs> I oh that's right. Uh oh my god. Uh Con- Connor says lands like and we do or, or no yeah. Uh Duncan says like our bones are all that we have and we don't break them. And I'm like, are they trying to quote Scarface right now? <laughs> Maybe all we have in this world are our bonds and our word, <laughs> and we don't break them for nobody. <laughs> now I will say that that again, cool idea, right? Like Connor realizes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to beat Kel and all he's going to do is torture me for the rest of time. You're not going to beat Kel and all he's going to do is kill you. Yeah. Combine our powers. We stand a chance. Yeah. We um, level up to, we go up to like level 450 instead of yeah. you know, 170 or whatever. And, he, and he's like, you need to be the one to do this. And credit to the two of them. Those two for basically only working together on one episode of the show. And then this movie did good chemistry. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, totally. like, I felt the emotions of the two of them, especially when when um, Connor puts Duncan in the the unbeatable move, yeah. which again, you know, whatever. But like that moment, and Duncan realizes what's happening. The the like the the interplay between the two of them is really good. There's really yeah. good emotion there for you know again a cheesy movie about immortal beings cutting each other's heads off. Yeah, yeah and they're making they get, me get, yeah, like, they get up feel in that move and uh, Duncan's like, no, I won't do it. And he's like, goodbye, my friend. <coughs> and I think they even say, like, I love you. And I was waiting for him to, like, kiss a little bit before they, like, really you know, wanted them to kiss a little bit. And, just yeah. just a little bit. Like, all right, I've always, I've, I've waited 400 years. I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Duncan just leans in, gets that kiss, and it's like, mm, not bad. And then they come out of it and, uh, you know, decapitate <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> like if it were Roger Daltrey or Fitzcarran or whatever involved in it, that totally what would happen. Oh, absolutely. But uh, so yeah, so yeah, the, the decapitate. Um, we get a flashback of uh, you know Lambert and all the other movies or whatever because you know Duncan's getting the quickening. Oh, 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 the Heather. All right. Oh, oh, the check. Uh, <laughs> Deborah Unger. All right. <laughs> hey, Brenda. What's up? Oh. It's like no, all the strange. Anyway. No, nobody does a quickening the way Adrian Paul does. A quickening. Oh yeah. No. True. Yeah. Like, he, he's definitely the one that's like coming through time and space every time he does yeah. the quickening. <laughs> and, and that's the other thing like with the series, like with all the quickenings and stuff, like you, you mentioned, like uh, the sword fights all have to be different and stuff. The quickening is a lot of the same thing too, where it's like, okay, yeah, this, this, you know, 
warehouse or whatever okay different fireworks uh some mansion or whatever in the middle of nowhere cool uh a, a gym whatever but then, yeah. then then towards the end of the season they're like fuck i don't know can we do one like on an airplane or something no that that the plane would just explode uh Ooh, how about just the runway though oh fuck yeah we could totally do a runway <laughs> yeah or the eiffel tower why not let's have one on yeah. the eiffel tower i mean we have it in the background in just about every shot from his houseboat right and i love too because you could always tell the episodes of the series that were the uh they didn't put the budget in for that particular episode because there either wouldn't <laughs> yeah. be a quickening or the quickening would just be like real quick and get it over with like we don't have a pyro budget for this one so uh <laughs> yeah, they, they would drop a little dry ice in a lake yeah. somewhere <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like exactly. a park like oh no this is totally the middle of the canadian wilderness oh it's bubbling ah oh, they, 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 you, know, you see like the I, I don't know drawn on lightning bolts and stuff. yep yeah. <laughs> all <of> that <laughs> oh ms paint anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah, after the quickening, we then cut to, um, I, I, I don't know, slow-mo stuff going on in the warehouse or, or yeah, that's right. Uh, Duncan's doing a bunch of like his slow-mo katas or whatever, like he had at yep. the end of season one, uh, in a warehouse, just preparing or whatever. And then Kel shows up. He's like, sup. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to do this thing then or what, man? Yeah. Let's fight. Hey, um, do you know where Connor is by chance? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like oh so connor's in there with you now all right we should fight and yeah they're of course at a warehouse but then somehow go down like into the sewers of the warehouse and i, I don't know like, like it, yeah fight on the catwalks like like it's the greatest hits of like all the fights from the first couple of movies and right like i'm pretty sure that catwalk is the exact same catwalk that Con- uh, connor fights kane on in yeah. calendar three like exactly yeah. the same um, yeah. And this is where, you know, I mentioned earlier how the movie kind of jumped around a lot. This is where it did a whole lot of jumping because they start off, they're supposed to be in London and they're in a warehouse, but then they're in the basement of the warehouse and then they go to like the third floor of the warehouse that's apparently in New York City now because yeah. it's a, definitely an American <laughs> skyline behind him. Yeah. And, and there's that weird like chain room or whatever they were fighting mm-hmm. in for a bit. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, did he just stumble into the Hellraiser set? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> the Hellraiser set or that room from the Nostromo and Alien that just oh, had yeah. like chains and water for no reason? Yeah, the water dripping down. Like, oh, this is going to get really good here if uh, Xenomorph shows up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, the chains get activated and start moving or whatever. And um, uh, I think Duncan like hurt his leg or whatever for a sec. And then we cut to some. Uh, the the guy that put him in the sanctuary earlier you know did put the windex up his nose now he's setting up like a sniper rifle like watching this whole thing going down which he hasn't learned anything about immortals apparently apparently well i think uh, because he's i think he's still uh big on like i gotta get one of these guys into the sanctuary and i i i'm a watcher it's not like i could find a different immortal to kidnap and do this with yeah it's got to be duncan yeah, well, and, and then here's the thing. Cool. He snipes Duncan. What happens then? Duncan gets decapitated because he's fighting Kel. Yeah. Like, period. Yeah, I mean, I mean look, yeah. it's it's not a smart plan. But uh, but then, out of left field, here comes Joe. Boom! No, we just watch. And, <laughs> and then he just fucking unloads on the guy. Clack, 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 clack. Joe for the win. And then, I feel and like, then... sometimes I feel like Joe... Is the Alfred of this series? Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yes. <laughs> and then, babe, what kind of movie is this? What, is, what does Joe say after he <laughs> unloads in this guy? Oh, my God, I don't remember. Merry Christmas. That's right. It's a Christmas movie. That's right. Oh, Island that's right. Yeah. Christmas it's a Christmas movie. movie. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Again, you got to wonder, like, did somebody just, they were like, we put the line in the script and damn it, we're going to film that line. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Because there's, there's sort of a blurry Christmas tree in the background, but what what are you doing oh see, I shit to think you know what that, it probably was see i prefer to think that joe just like did that one liner <laughs> like they're filming in the middle of july he thought it'd be really funny yeah. and they cut it out and then they like left it in <laughs> shit i'll bet that you in an so earlier bad. draft there was a thing where kel had to get his uh 
get it by New Year's Eve on, oh, in the year 2000 oh, or yeah. whatever, like yeah. Ghostbusters 2 or something, or uh, oh. End of Days or whatever. You know what? That honestly oh, would have been better. Yeah, right? <laughs> it would have been. And it would have been better than End of Days, but anyway. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's, not, it's not a great movie. <laughs> oh. Christ in New York. What if it's Christine York? Yeah. We, we did mm. an episode on it. <laughs> I just, Guys, check I, our back catalog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just did it recently for a different show, and uh, yeah. so it's, it's fresh in my brain. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, Merry Christmas, blah, blah, blah. And then Cal starts monologuing again, and uh, he says something about, like, uh, now you've inherited uh, Connor's revenge and blah, blah, blah. And Yeah, <laughs> yeah I also have, like, dark quickening and, like th- like, 35 insane people inside me, so... This this shit's normal. This is yeah. Wednesday. And Kel like yeah. shows like uh, Connor's mom's necklace or whatever they you know he he, he he you know shows every once in a while just to remind him like that's right I killed your mother and I'm angry at you for <laughs> killing my dad blah 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 but uh and then I don't know uh, Duncan starts doing his best Connor impersonation where he's like maybe if you have, like I, like like his accent got a little different there for before they started so, oh, yeah, dubbing definitely. in Connor right. Yes. So, yeah, and and again, theatrical version, that happened a lot more. Like that face morph that they do twice, I think, in this happened a bunch in the theatrical right. version. When they did the face and morph, did anybody else get Vigo from Ghostbusters 2 yep. vibes? <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah>. 100%. Okay. <laughs> he is Vigo. I, You're like the passing of flies to him. <laughs> yeah, I will never understand the face morph thing because, again, never come up before. It's never happened in the history of any Highlander property prior to this. And somebody was like, this is a good idea. We need to do this. Yeah, but, and but they did it, it more. Wasn't, they they it didn't wasn't have Connor. face morph technology in 1990. Otherwise, the Quick Thing 2 would have been called uh, Highlander 2 face morph. <laughs> right. No, guys, it's it's because it wasn't Connor. His, right. Yeah, like, it's, it's Connor. Yeah, it's that He's strong different. essence. He's special. That's right. That's right. I killed like 100 <laughs> more than this bitch Duncan. I'm taking over. <laughs> No, but he's but, the uh, chosen one. But then, and we know Duncan is very special too. That's not right. just because he has special needs. Highlanders inside him. <laughs> Don't you want me inside you? Anyway, no. Uh, but yeah, then uh, you know Duncan, he gets uh, Kel in that that Chekhov's move, the unbreakable move. Travis, what happens? Uh, he breaks it, <laughs> like Who really knew? easily. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. And so then Duncan just gets stabbed a bunch, like, in the gut. Like, flick, 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 flick. Did anybody, like, he gets fucking prison shanked. Did anybody else what? want, like, an exploding sword or something when he blocked, oh. the, blocked the unblockable move? Like, something? That would have been pretty cool. But I do, I I did like Kel after that just going, like, all right, cat, cat, cat. Like, I'm just taking you out and just punching him in the stomach with that blade a bunch of times. Yeah, that it's was... like, I'm bored. <laughs> Yeah, then he starts doing like, oh, yes, the game is done. But then we get the Connor voice one last time. <laughs> the game isn't over yet. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Turning into Peter Laurie. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is that not Christopher Lambert accent? There can only uh, yeah, fair enough. Is this where he drops the, like, eh, don't you want me to be inside of you or whatever? <laughs> yeah, Connor Connor throws that line back at him, and then Duncan, Duncan does an Obi-Wan on him. Flips over him and and uh, cuts his head off. Yeah. In the end, there can only be one, and you're not it. Sink. <laughs> and then we get the Uber quickening, the big one that I assume mm-hmm. caused that big blackout in the northeast of the United States. On <laughs> <laughs> right. Because <laughs> yeah, they were like at a power station or warehouse Babe, or whatever, but it was Y two K. Oh, they were gonna shit. cause Y two K. That was it. <laughs> that that was definitely in the script at some point. Like, the, <laughs> right? And again, oh, it would have been better. They should have done a whole apocalypse end of times thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we get the quickening, and uh, he passes out. Um, and then we cut to Duncan at Connor's grave in Scotland. Uh, and then blue we screen get... Scotland, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally blue screen too. It's like, oh man. It's like a Which, screensaver he's standing in. <laughs> right? It is, and that was yeah. another thing. It, if you notice that shot, Duncan kind of turns around, and he just sort of stands there. Mm-hmm. And it's because in the in the original cut of it, he turns around, and he starts to walk away, and you can clearly tell he just he only has like four feet before the blue screen. He's so, just like, 
Oh, I, I thought it was just him, like, lifting his legs or whatever, like he's walking. Or, or, or he does, like, the, the crouching down like he's walking down some stairs. Yes. Oh, that would have been so much better. <laughs> and we get the song from the end of the third movie. I mean, and, look, I, I love the song Bonnie Portmore. It is a beautiful song. It, it is song. really good. And, I, I, I just can't sing it. So, But it know. should have been who wants to live forever. Yeah, they didn't have the budget for that music. Yeah. They couldn't pay for it. <laughs> yeah, so then uh, then we cut to, I don't know, some concert or a circus or something, I thought. But, but, but then it's like, oh no, he's going to see Kate at her fashion show? <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute. Didn't she die? Right. Oh, no. She's alive now. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it's like, oh, no, Faith is dead. I'm going to give Kate a chance again. <laughs> and then they kiss, fade to black, roll credits, guys. That's Highlander Endgame. Yeah. I well, I mean, like I said, it's not good, uh, but I like it. Like, <laughs> I, I give so, it. So, I, would you recommend it? <laughs> oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> I would, if you like Highlander, I would <laughs> recommend it. If you do not or have not watched Highlander, d- just don't, don't, because it's all it's going to be is confusing and it's not going to make a lick of sense. Like, I can I can explain away and kind of hand wave myself through a lot of the dumb shit in the movie because I just like the world that it exists in. But it's not a good movie. It it there's a reason it's like a four something on IMDb. Um, uh, wait, 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 save it for fun facts. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no worries, but no worries. either way, it's it's still better than the one that came after it. So, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much universally accepted. I'll I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, babe. How about you? Would you recommend this uh, Highlander Endgame? If you've seen the series, yeah. yes. If you have not seen the series, skip it. You won't care about any of the characters. And you want to know half of them are really anyway, right. other than a, a yeah. line of exposition. But because yeah. well, I, I love me some mythos. Now yeah. I didn't give two fucks about mythos before I watched the show. Like, ooh, he's an old guy. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Are they all old? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, say the same thing. I get- the first time we watched it, I remember like being like, "Oh, this movie's kind of kind of dumb," but I, don't, I just didn't know who anybody was. Like, I, it was I, almost I put... un- unwatchable because we just did not care about anything. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, well, when the other thing was also like, "Oh, uh, you know, the the one that got away from Duncan or whatever," and blah blah blah, and that whole romance drama. I don't give a shit about any of that in any Highlander movie. I <laughs> I really nope. don't. And and I love uh, Roxanne Hart and uh, Deborah Unger and all the actresses that play those parts, but mm-hmm. but but just whenever it's the drama, I'm always like, but you're also immortal, so you'll get over that shit. Like I don't know, right. like, time heals all wounds, you know. There's there's one relationship in any of the Highlander properties, whether it's movies or or the series, that I cared about, and that's Duncan and Tess. Tessa because it was yep. such an integral part of the first season and a half. Yeah. Um. And her being mortal and knowing about his immor- immortality and him not hiding it from all that kind of stuff, that was fine. Uh, all the immortal ones and, and everything in the movies, I'm like, eh, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, when uh, when he proposed to Tess, I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> no, mm-hmm. Duncan, yeah. you've killed her. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, movie got a movie. But... Uh, so, yeah, I guess on that note, we'll take a quick commercial break. Oh, but when we come back. We have more beer. What? Fun facts. And what we learned from Highlander Endgame. Mm -hmm. Highlanders, assemble. Yeah! Hey everybody, are you looking for the perfect stocking stuffer for the holidays? Do you like supporting the arts? Well then you need to check out untidyvenus.etsy.com The top one-stop shop that always pops her top. Ah, Are you a fan of dinosaurs? Snacks? Dinosaurs made out of snacks? Movie monsters? Unicorns? Cats, dogs, rats, shrimp, Pokemon, tie-dye, paracord bracelets, paracord dog leashes, enamel pins, coloring books, block prints, watercolor, pet portraits, buttons, magnets, stickers, bottle openers, artist trading cards, or really anything else that's awesome? Then stop on by untidyvenus.etsy.com. That's a goddess who's bad at housekeeping. Etsy.com. New items are popping up all the time, so be sure to follow her on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Patreon at untidyvenus.com. 
or visit her website at izzycreates.com for the latest. Did I mention the Snackosaurs? How about Gary the Unicorns? UntidyVenus.etsy.com, the goddess who's bad at housekeeping. Check it out now. Hi, guys. We interrupt your favorite podcast to interrupt you with an ad for your new favorite podcast. Wait, wait. Isn't this playing on somebody else's show? Exactly. So then how are we... I thought we were their new favorite podcast. Well, we're going to become their new favorite podcast after they hear this advertisement for our show. What's our show called, Justine? Superiority Complex. Yeah. Where can they find us, Patrick? Uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, exactly. You can go to at Soup Complex on Twitter, S-O-U-P Complex, and you can go to Facebook.com slash Soup Complex. But our main page is... On Podbean, and you can find us there at www.superioritycomplex.podbean.com. New episodes are out every Thursday. Justine, yes. what do we talk about on the Superiority Complex? Nerdy stuff. Perfect. Don't get all sensual with your voice. Yeah, did you hear that? I heard it. It's a little inappropriate. If you want to hear a little more of that, tune in to the Superiority Complex. One more time, Justine, what do we talk about? Nerdy stuff. Nah, wasn't no. the same. You tried. There's so many podcasts out there. How do I find the one for me? For so long, I've searched for podcasts all over, but none of them seem to fit my needs. Where's my Nick Cage Pissing Fire podcast? Where's my monkey tickling? I couldn't find it anywhere until I found everything I learned from movies podcast with Steve and Izzy. And now I get to hear about all the monkey tickling I want, baby. So many podcasts out there are all talk and no Congo. That's why I listen to everything I learned from movies. Greatest living actor? Nicolas Cage, of course. That's why I listen to everything I learned from movies. One-liners, plot holes, gratuitous boobies? Fun fact, that's why I listen to everything I learned from movies. See if everything I learned from movies is right for you at EILF Movies. That's everything I learned from movies on Twitter, Facebook, or Patreon. Free on all the major podcatchers. Hi, this is Johnny C. McGinley, and you're listening to Everything I Learned from Movies. All the best. And here we are! No. And we're back! <laughs> oh my god, Steve. This is the greatest ads that ever added in the history of adding. Oh, she said it! They get better every week! Yeah! Well, babe, I don't know about you. I'm a little thirsty. I've been coughing this whole episode, so I definitely need something. <laughs> That's the way, a future Steve problem. I am so sorry about that. I was fine all day. <laughs> if you're wondering why she's been <laughs> quiet half the episode. No, I'm just no. trying to choke down the coughs. <laughs> From Rogue Brewing, Dead Guy Ale. Gratefully dedicated to the rogue in each of us. Dead Guy is a My Box style ale with a robust... Malt profile and sweetness that is balanced with a liberal use of bittering hops. Yeah. Dare. Risk. Dream. 6% alcohol by volume. Yeah. Pop my top. Ah. Uh-oh. It smell? I sort of shook it a little bit when I tried to grab the top first. Mm. There we go. It's one way to do it. Oh, my top. <laughs> Sorry, I was making sure that top got to breathe a minute. And the pour. Ugh. Yeah. So we got like two Meritson style beers because I haven't been drinking and this is what I wanted. Mm-hmm. But we have a beautiful dark uh, amber ale with a creamy white head that's lingering. Creamy head and it's lingering. Mm, it smells mm. like a Maybach. Yeah. Not too hoppy. Guys, we've, done, malty on the we've done dead guy ale on here a bunch. You know, we love it. It's malt forward, but yeah, the got the little bittering at the end. Hot, fairly high octane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All day drinker. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's Rogue Brewing Dead Guy Ale. Uh, Travis, you still uh, enjoying, I guess, water on your end? or? <laughs> uh, yeah, water for me. Excellent. Well, would either of you be interested in any fun facts about this movie? I love fun facts. I don't know, Steve. Are they fun facts, super fun facts, because they're fun, fun facts? You sound like a slowed down uh, r- record of yourself, like set to the wrong speed. I can't, like, fun you... facts, super fun facts, go <laughs> fun, fun facts. All right, let's see if I even have that range. No, no, don't, don't, fun don't. Fun facts, super just, fun facts, because they're fun facts. You're just going to cough. <laughs> uh, all right, IMDb. Travis, what do you think the critics thought of Highlander Endgame? 
Oh, boy. Uh, well, they didn't get a screening of it before the movie came out. I know that. They did not <laughs> screen this movie for critics ahead That's of That's what weeks. we call a hint. <laughs> yeah. Um, that should have that told people a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And yet again, not Highlander the source. So where do, where, where do you go? Uh, the, I, they couldn't have liked it, right? Like, I know the overall rating isn't great, but the critics definitely didn't like yeah, it. What, uh, what, what, uh, what overall percentage do you think it got? Who 17? <laughs> Is he? Um, oh, he stole my super generous 17%. Okay. Higher or lower? Go with that. I'm going to go lower. It was lower 11% with the critics. Oh, shit. But, but nobody gives a fuck about the critics. What about that audience fuck score? Fuck those critics. Uh, Izzy, you want to go first? Um, I'm going to go 22. All right. Oh, I'm going to go low, higher. Travis? I'll go higher than that. <laughs> yep. Uh, 38% with the audience. So, you know, <laughs> just under still not half good. of the people that knew they were going to watch a Highlander movie <laughs> still thought it was all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. $25 million budget. Any guesses on the worldwide gross? And yes, it was mm. in theaters. Okay. Uh, Travis, you want to go first? 10 million. Is he? Um, $35 and a six pack. <laughs> well, Travis closes 15.8 million worldwide. That's higher than Highlander two or Highlander three. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Highlander two didn't do great. And everyone was like Highlander three, but that last movie was shit. I'm not going to go see that. <laughs> yeah. So they watched it on video like I did. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the producers had wanted to shoot the film in Vancouver like the series, but the studio chose Romania because filming was cheaper there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. Like you mentioned, the film's trailer contained many sequences and elements not in the film, including scenes suggesting that the villain Kel possessed supernatural abilities and the scene showing Connor and Duncan leaping through a magical portal. It was never. Oh, yeah. It was later revealed that certain scenes were shot exclusively for the trailer to make the film look more interesting. Now... I I give a little scrutiny to that in that trailer trash is a normal thing, right? Like stuff that's in the trailers for a movie that gets cut. We rebel. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. When you reshoot half your movie, that's going to happen. But um, I don't totally buy that scenes were shot exclusively for the trailer. I think that's the producers covering their ass where it was. Well, we shot a bunch of stuff and then decided it didn't work and we redid it. So, no, that was just shot for the trailer, of course. And we did spend $100,000 on those special effects. So right. <laughs> we're not going to use it at any other points in the movies or anything because we're going to cut them out. But we're definitely putting them in the trailer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently, there were other people allegedly uh, considered for the role of Jacob Kell. Oh, these are always my favorite things. Right. Like <laughs> trivia. And, like uh, any guys. any action movie from like 1982 yeah. to 1997 has Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger were up for the role always yeah. in any action even even movies where it didn't make sense people have gone and put that in there in the IMDb trivia but who who were some of the possibles in the running for Jacob Kell I got to know Well the 3 I have written down all I mean no offense to Bryce Payne or whatever he did a great job but Jean-Claude Van Damme was one of them Okay. Oh shit. Billy Idol was another. <laughs> because you know, he had just okay. done I guess the wedding singer or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. That's an interesting that's choice. So it's so weird thinking like this movie came out after the wedding singer. Like yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this this seems it had the feeling of like the T V series, so it's like, oh yeah, it's definitely like ninety four to ninety six kind of time period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but the last one, and this would have been interesting. David Bowie. Oh, I mean, okay, so hot off of uh, uh, Fire Walk with Me. Uh, that was uh, like six years before, but yeah, you know. <laughs> um. So so okay. So what do we think the probability is that David Bowie was actually approached to do this movie? Because uh, because I feel like I he feel did like that's... Fire Walk with Me. I understand that, but that's David Lynch. Last Temptation of Christ, uh, you know. (laughs) Like, like that's David Lynch, and that's also off the backs of, uh, like, sensational show like Twin Peaks. Yeah. This feels like it was a producer was like, well, we thought about David Bowie. You mentioned that name. Like, oh, 
Shit, you, didn't you know what David Bowie was doing around this time? Cameos in Zoolander and shit like that. Oh, <laughs> so, then yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just wasn't looking for a uh, leading role and going to Romania for a couple of months. Like, he was just like... <laughs> Like, if he was approached or his publicist or whatever, like, no, he's busy. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, Billy I Idol's wanna... available. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to I wanna travel to the alternate universe, though, where Jean-Claude Van Damme was cast mm-hmm. as Jacob Kell just for the scene between Jean-Claude Van Damme and Christopher Lambert because yeah. it's just the accent off. Like, yes. <laughs> who... Who are we getting? Like, oh, especially when Jean Claude like leans in is, uh, don't you want to be inside of me? <laughs> oh, right. And this is this is late '90s Jean Claude, so he's probably still like you know pretty hopped up on uh, on a lot of the the illicit substances. Oh so. yeah, yeah. Let's see, two thousand. Yeah, this is like a, that'd be like prime uh, Universal Soldier two, <laughs> like yeah, like the Return yep. or whatever. Yeah. Oh shit, Michael J. White. Anyway. Um, and uh, for the role of Kate, uh, apparently Lucy Lawless and Juliet Landau were also considered, but yeah, I, I doubt that. <laughs> well, Lucy Lawless, I could see because she was doing Xena Warrior Princess at the time, and she would have been a good, en- she would have been a big enough name for them to approach doing TV. She would have been cheaper for them to to try and get, but. I don't think they had a chance because that show was in syndication and wasn't going anywhere. So she was tied yeah. to that. Yeah, that makes sense. And Julia Landau, like, I think she had been uh, written out of Buffy by that point. So, <laughs> but, 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 oh. but yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's, it, it was a role made for just someone that looks pretty and I don't know, and cut her hair short. I don't know. <laughs> something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the original title was, Highlander, World Without End. Um, mm-hmm. And apparently at various stages of production, it was also called Highlander for the Immortals and Highlander, the Search for Connor. <laughs> Which, Search for Connor's ooh. Gold. You're right. Those are not good. Those are not good titles. Yeah. I, yeah, I think Endgame's like 10 times better than any of those. I don't know. <laughs> or, uh, Definitely. Oh, oh, God. It should have been something like Highlander Double Impact or something. Like that. <laughs> Highlander... The Highlander 4, this time it's personal. Yeah. <laughs> Highlander, there can only be one. I this mean... Is four. There can only be four. Highlander 4, there should only have been one. <laughs> oh, though they should have done the uh, It's High Land 4. <laughs> we replaced the A with the 4 in Highlander. Oh, Highlander. yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like Expend yeah. 4 Bulls? <laughs> like Expend 4 Bulls. God, yep. we gotta watch or, that when it comes free somewhere. <laughs> right? Expend four bulls or seven, seven, seven. seven. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's the seven and seven and? Oh my gosh. Uh, uh M M three gun. There was M three gun. Yes, and I was trying to think. Uh, oh my god, the Marvel one that they can't get ever, or DC one they can never get right. Oh, fan four stick. Fan four stick. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Cool. <laughs> specifically the fan four stick edition yeah well travis thank you so much for joining us here on everything i learned from movies um i understand you also have a podcast i do uh i have i have a couple but uh, the main one that i do is called wait you haven't seen and uh it's where um either my guest or i watch a movie for the first time um i help a lot of people take stuff off their list of shame or i watch movies i haven't heard of i've had guests come on bringing me their favorite movie of all time um, and we watch it and talk about it. And it's a whole lot of fun. I have seen uh, movies I've never heard of before that have become some of my favorites. Um, I've done 250 episodes now. And uh, of the 250 movies that I've watched for it, there's only like three or four that I didn't like. Um, oh, nice. So it's, it's mm-hmm. a whole lot of fun. Well, we'll be sure to bring some real crap on for you. No, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I expect nothing less. <laughs> or you could watch our favorite movies. Well, there we go. <laughs> Wait, if... have you seen Congo? <laughs> there you go. Oh, I have. I have seen Congo. Okay, <laughs> but have you seen Big Trouble in Little China? Uh, not only have I seen Big Trouble in Little China, that is a favorite from my childhood. There we yes, go. mine too. All right, we'll have to, oh, we'll no, have we'll to have dig to, a little deeper. We'll have to whip out my mom's <laughs> favorite movie. Ooh. My oh, mother, boy and his dog. Boy and his dog. 
Oh, eighteen year old Don Johnson. That's when I have seen. Post-apocalyptic movie. Um, I know He's, of it, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Baby Don Johnson going through post-apocalyptic world with his uh, psychic dog named Blood, looking for some food and some. Booty. Just to clarify, teenage Don Johnson, not baby Don Johnson. He, <laughs> compared to Don Johnson, that everybody knows. I mean, yeah, yeah. Just baby. baby face Don Johnson. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. <laughs> Excellent. And, uh, and where can we find this podcast? Uh, you can find it anywhere you get your podcast, but because I don't understand how SEO works and or giving something that's got a good searchable title and I put things like question marks in there, um, <laughs> it, I'm not good at marketing is kind of where I'm getting at here. But um, tvstravis.com is the easiest way to find that and other shows that I do and uh, projects that I do and all the all the stuff is there. And don't forget, let's watch Highlander, which I am now subscribed to. So I'll start b- yeah. binging some of those. There you go. And babe, are you on social media at all? I am. You can find me everywhere at Untidy Venus. That's like a goddess who's bad at housekeeping. Oh, I'm on Blue Sky right now, or Blue Skis, as we call it. That's right, good old Blue Ski. Good old Blue Ski. Mm-hmm. We under Blue Skis. Um, yeah, Steve, where can we find you? Oh, well, I am also on Blue Ski, uh, but you can, you can find us on all the major podcatchers under everything I learned from movies or hit us up, uh, directly on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Blue Ski at E-I-L-F movies. That's everything Everything I learned from movies. Uh, yeah, coming up. Yeah, obviously we're going to be wrapping up Highlander with everybody's favorite, the source next week. (laughs) Um, and then yeah, going into February. Oh man, we have a mix of movies. We picked oh, yeah. a few. Our guests picked a few of their favorites. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Be sure to follow us. Subscribe. Uh, smash the like buttons. I don't know. Whatever all the kids say. Yeah. Rate put review. Us, put whatever. us in your ear holes. T- t- tell a friend. Let us get inside of you. Uh, so, yeah. I guess until next time, I'm Steve. And I'm Izzy. And I'm Travis. And this is Everything, Everything I Learned From movies. movies. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. There can be